again to all of you. We're going to go over the soda ash determination experiment. Um, so this is primarily titration. So you can start with your burette. Again, your burette should have DI water on it in it. That's what it should have been stored with. So you can just empty that out. We're going to titrate a base with an acid. So we're going to get our HCl out and I'll maybe do a small aliquot. Do a little rinse of this burette before I actually fill it and use it. Uh, your soda ash will be in the desiccator. The soda ash unknown will be in a small sample jar, so make sure you get that out. Mass out your small, your points, 0 0.6 grams of that. Go ahead and put that in your Erlenmeyer flask along with your 50 milliliters of water and swirl that. It should dissolve. It might take a little while to get all of it to dissolve but it should definitely dissolve. Once you've got that, you've got your burette full of your 0.1 molar HCl. So this is the HCl you prepared in the previous experiment. And then we'll take out our flask. We're gonna start with our phenolphthalein indicator, again, which is at the bench top. You should have dropper bottles of phenolphthalein and bromocrystal green. And we'll add our three drops of that. And you'll notice that before, when you started your titration, it was clear, but this time when we add the indicator, it turns pink. We'll start adding at a relatively fast drop or drip uh, stream here. And what I'm looking for is that pink color to start disappearing. I wanna either take that to a very faint pink or even to a clear if possible. Look at it, dog! Oh! We could probably get away with that or try for something a little lighter, probably good enough. You'll know uh, if you also have a light enough color, Next thing we're gonna do is add that bromocrystal green. If we add that, we get a noticeable blue color, not a purple, then that's good. We've taken that far enough. So add the bromocrystal green, and you can see I've got pretty strong blue there, not really a purple. So I should have gone far enough. Um, now I'm gonna titrate this till I get an aqua green color. Uh, this is probably gonna happen a little bit faster than the uh, how long it took you to lose your um, previous pink color. Yeah, I feel like this stuff used to be really fast. Yeah, I didn't think it'd take this long. So there's a time lapse for this one. I apologize. So you can see it's a faint green aqua color because it's relatively light. Um, if you go a little too far, you'll go all the way to that yellow. That's okay. You may not have necessarily over titrated. Um, so if you get the green, that's great. Even if you get yellow, take it. Put it on that hot plate, boil it. As long as you can get it to go back, either get it to go yellow to blue or even yellow to green is fine. Or ideally you got the green and you boil it and get it to blue. And then we're gonna finish uh, that last step of that titration after we boil it uh, and get that color change. That very last titration is probably only gonna take a few drops. We're gonna resume that titration and more than likely we're gonna see that yellow color yep come pretty rapidly but it's so bright and yellow I can't. even though you may have used you know 10 20 milliliters to get to the point right before this it's probably only gonna be four or five drops to get that final yellow color that you're looking for and then your total volume from where you started from the very pink until yellow is what you're gonna to want to report uh, or utilize to figure out how much HCl did you use to titrate that soda ash and then how much soda ash is present in there. Do that uh, at least three times, get three good titrations, do your calculations, get an average, report your final percent soda ash, and that's this experiment. This is safe to go down the sink. As soon as you're done with this, you can sink it, clean up all your glassware, and you're all done. That's it.